Open RAN has been in development for years already, but we're still in the early stages of testing and validating multi-vendor configurations and optimum deployment scenarios. Well, to find out more about these important aspects, I'm talking today with Carsten Rosenhervel, Managing Director and Co-Founder of EANTC, the European Advanced Networking Test Centre. Carsten, thanks very much for joining us today. Good to talk to you. Uh, can you quickly tell us about EANTC and what you do and your involvement in the Open RAN community? Sure, it's a pleasure, Ray. Thank you for having me. So thanks for explaining the mouthful of EANTC already. Uh, we are an independent test lab around for more than 25 years meanwhile. And uh, we have been involved in ORAN testing and hopefully soon certification for almost more than three years now. So we've run already uh, three plugfests, co-organizing them together with Deutsche Telekom, Vodafone and Telefonica in Germany and in Europe. Uh, we are a member of the Telecom Infra project. So I'm actually serving in the test and verification committee. And um, we are testing most areas of ORAN, starting from the platform, like front hall switching, O-Cloud, through the actual infrastructure, like the radio units, the DUs and CUs, and to the network optimization, uh, the radio, in uh, radio integrated controllers, and uh, the management SMO parts as well. Okay, so the, the real full suite uh, of what is being developed for Open RAN. Now, uh, I mean, Open RAN developments have been underway for a few years already. Uh, how do you see the market developing? What's your view on the current state of the Open RAN ecosystem and its maturity? It's a very interesting ecosystem, and I hope it will continue developing as it does today. Of course, it's very vibrant and new vendors are coming up all the time, especially in the radio sector of the open radio units, the ORUs. We see a broad multi-vendor market developing because there is a lot of uh, distinct expertise in the area of uh, radios in the market worldwide. On the DUs and CUs, like the central components of the uh, management and the software in this open RAN environment, the market is quite narrow. So that's a little bit of a concern to me because a, a small number of knowledgeable players are evolving here and it can easily develop into a situation where they become um, a bottleneck for multi-vendor solutions. Um, but in general, all of these components are already beyond the what Gardner calls the inflated expectations uh, top of the hype cycle. So I think they're all getting down to reality now. All vendors are developing very eagerly. And in general, it's a very good development. Although I think rarely, if at all, we see production ready solutions in the market out there right now, if they're multi-vendor. Um, and I think generally we have to understand some new innovative, innovative markets are single vendor markets like SD-WAN, for example, where there is just an idea and a standard and a vendor can come up with an ingenious idea and say, okay, I have a wonderful uh, solution. I'm selling it now on my own. But the ORAN market in comparison is inherently a multi-vendor market. It only works if multiple vendors are working together and integrating. And that has, has two challenges. First, you know, the integration needs to take place somewhere and at some time. And second, no single vendor, how, no matter how great they are, can shine with their products by their own. So everybody needs to move at the same pace. And that's what makes the market inherently much more complex. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think there's a, a lot of moving parts, a lot of companies uh, seeking to uh, address that um, looking forward in 2023 ahead of what uh, many uh, in the market hope will be uh, broader uh, deployments of Open RAN in 2024 and beyond. Uh, but at this stage of the market, what do you think can be done to accelerate developments in the Open RAN sector? What would help to move things along a bit faster? Well, inherently, I think service providers are going to buy solutions if they trust them, if they trust that they can sustain the um, performance, scalability, manageability, security, and reliability aspects that service providers need in their production networks. And that trust, I think, has not been widely established yet. So naturally, with, with our company, with my uh, area of expertise, I think quality assurance needs to be improved 
Uh, there need to be as open and transparent data as possible, reporting about the actual status. That's what we've been doing at ENTC for like 25 years. We don't want to finger point to vendors that don't get their job done best in the best way possible yet. But um, it's always good to disclose the actual state of the market in an anonymous way and to also praise the successes in a named way where we name the vendors. So I think that's a great uh, start with the Plugfest um, developments from the Oran Alliance. But we have to go beyond that step, beyond the functional testing and just the nice plugging and playing. We need to get to real scalability, performance testing, optimization testing, and all of the crucial areas that will gain the trust and will also explain the benefits of the technology at a much more detailed level to the service providers. Yeah, no, I think that's absolutely critical. And that's what a lot of uh, operators, uh, whether they're um, uh, telcos or whether their um, uh, enterprises are looking for right now. Uh, they're looking for, for things they can trust and looking for other examples of deployments as well, of course. Uh, now, within the Open RAN ecosystem, the RAN Intelligent Controller, or RIC, uh, is emerging as a key area of development. Uh, how important do you think the RIC platforms and the X apps and R apps that will run of them will be for network operators? I think there is really great potential for RICs and the situation is much earlier than in the radio space and the UNCU space. So there is a small number of vendors who has already provided, uh, is providing solutions at the uh, joint program with Deutsche Telekom, the i14 YLAB. We have worked already with uh, VMware, with Juniper, and uh, we are about to work with Nokia's RIC as well. Um, the market has not yet decided which types of these rigs. There are two, the non-real-time and the near-real-time is more prone to fixing the challenges that op mobile operators have. And uh, there are more than 10 use case scenarios for XAPs and RAPs where third-party vendors could come in and plug their solutions. Now, as I said before, integration is the main challenge and integrating the XFs and RFs into a RIC, which then integrates into an open RAN network. That's like a double integration challenge, which doesn't make it easier. So on the other hand, SONs have been up before, like self-organizing networks. The function of optimizing the network, the radio resources, has been around in proprietary environments from the big legacy vendors for years. And so the industry is quite is quite uh, known, knows this problem and knows how to solve it. And we just have to see in how far the X apps and R apps will bring added value to the network. So for example, in Europe, the energy efficiency is uh, quite a big concern right now because the cost for electricity is uh, skyrocketing. And uh, the question is, can a complex X app or R app scenario actually bring more value than just uh, doing some static planning of resource usage of base stations over time and then just switching them off in the most dumb way every night at 2 a.m. and switching them back on at 6 a.m. So we have to see where the optimization promises are actually going to be fulfilled. But I think where they can be fulfilled, there's a great potential future for the rigs. Yeah, absolutely. And I get the feeling that we're going to hear a lot more about energy efficiency and open RAN and the role that uh, the various apps on RICS can play during MWC this year and throughout 2023. And double integration, uh, I think that, that, that that's a term that should be put on badges uh, at the show in Barcelona as well, just to scare people a little more. Uh, Carsten, great insights. Great to talk with you today. Thanks very much for joining us and look forward to chatting again throughout the course of 2023. Thank you. Thank you.